If you want to learn how to set up the recording process in Pro Tools, check out this video. This is part of a larger video of us recording an entire song step by step with the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Studio. Don't forget to watch the entire video to go much deeper into the recording process. Up next, we can start the recording process. Now we've got Pro Tools opening, so we can start recording soon. All right, this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm obsessed with recording, so I'm really excited to show you guys how to do this. So before we can start tracking, we need to optimize Pro Tools for recording. If you follow these steps, we can make that happen. So let's hop over to the screen here. First, we have to name our session. This song is about an early morning coffee date. We wrote this song just for this video, so I hope you guys like it. And this song is called Brew for Two. And I'm not going to use one of the templates because I want you guys to uh, learn how to do this from scratch. But if you wanted to use a template, just check this box and you can scroll through the options they have for you. Then hit create. And I'm gonna make this full screen. So the first thing we have to do to optimize Pro Tools is go to our setup tab, go to playback engine, Make sure that your audio interface is selected. We are using the Scarlett Solo USB. And then you can optimize for record or playback. Then hit OK. Now we are ready to start recording. The first thing we need is a click track. A click track is a metronome that allows us to keep time with the tempo that you set and keep the song consistent the whole way through. This allows us to edit the instruments and fix any off time mistakes. When you create tempos, Pro Tools also makes a grid that shows you the subdivisions of each bar. To create your click track, go up to the track menu and select create click track. Now if I just hit play here, you'll see that it already has a sound to it, but you can click this insert and change the sounds based on what you like to hear. Pro Tools defaults to 120 beats per minute, but we've determined this song is at 90 beats per minute. So we want to change this 120 BPM tempo to 90. To do that, double click this red arrow here. It will bring up this window, replace the 120 with 90, and press enter. As you can see, it changed the bars and the click track is already slower. After we find our tempo, we can then create a scratch track using a guitar. This is a guide track that our drummer can play to so he has a reference of the song and it will help him keep time. It's a track we're going to delete later, which is why we call it a scratch track. Even if you're just using programmed drums, it's still helpful to have a guitar scratch track as an outline. To do this, we've got to make a new track in Pro Tools. Go to the track menu and select new, or you can use the keyboard shortcut shift command N or shift control N on Windows. And we only need one track. It's going to be mono audio because we're recording audio. And we can rename this scratch guitar. I'm gonna resize this, just make that a little bit bigger. I'm not sure why uh, Pro Tools first does this, but it creates a track with elastic audio already on. So I'm just going to turn this off. And then I'm going to load up the included 11 light guitar amp plugin. This is a guitar amp modeler, and it allows you to plug in your guitar directly into the interface and still make it sound like it's going through a real guitar amp. At this point, I can plug my guitar directly into the Scarlett Solo. Within Pro Tools, I have to make sure I have the correct input selected. On the Scarlett Solo, the guitar input is input two. So I'm going to select interface, input two, and you'll see it changed. Then we can enable this track and prepare for recording. To enable the track, select this button right here. You'll see it's flashing red, and that means it's ready to record. Once the track is enabled, I can set the level on my interface. To do this, turn the knob up until the green halo is lighting up consistently, and you're, you're peeking around in this yellow meter area. That sounds good to me, let's get started. To start recording, I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut three on the number pad. If you don't have a number pad or don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, you can also click this record button here and then press play. And this will begin the recording process. 
Before we start, it's important to make sure you are in the grid mode. So that way you can just select directly on the line and you are on the grid line. I like to give myself a few bars before recording. This way, if I wanna add intro effects or uh, need some kind of lead in, I've got the space there without having to add it later. I'm going to start at bar nine. So I'm gonna press enter on the number pad and this will be my first location. I'm gonna call this start. I'm going to give myself two bars before that and then I'll start recording. When you're recording the scratch track, it's really important to make sure this is in time. If the drummer is playing to something off time where the click and the track are fighting, the drummer's not gonna have the best performance possible. So record until you mess up and then we can punch in. So let's start now. If you make a mistake while recording the scratch track, like I do all the time, you don't have to re-record the entire thing. You can just focus on the spots you messed up on and punch those in. I'll show you how to do that now. The first thing you have to do is make sure that Pro Tools is in punch mode. Go up here to the record button, right click, and select quick punch. Next thing you have to do is open up your transport window. You can do this in a few different ways. You can go to the window tab and select transport or use the keyboard shortcut, command, and press one on the number pad. Then you can select pre-roll. Pre-roll is the set amount of bars that will play before Pro Tools starts recording. I like to use two bars, so you can select here in this first box, press two, and hit enter. So I will punch in the verse because I think I could have played that a little bit tighter. I'm actually going to rename this verse one. So all you have to do then is make sure your track is enabled and press three on the number pad. Pro Tools will then play these two bars and then start recording. When you're done punching in your part, you might notice some extra space at the end of the audio file. To trim this back, make sure you're in the smart tool mode you can select any of these three or select just above it to highlight all three of them. And make sure that Pro Tools is showing you this icon that looks kind of like a bracket and just drag it over. You can drag this to any spot that's been recorded on this file previously, but it's always good to make the breaks where there's a space. Now that was the scratch track I did punching it on, but you can do this on any kind of track. Thanks again for watching and supporting us. With your help, we can continue to make great recording videos and content like this. Don't forget to subscribe or follow this channel to catch all of our new releases.